All right, everybody. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can pass an array to a function. Suppose we have an array of prices. These will be of the double data type, double prices, straight brackets, equals, just make up some prices, $49.99, $15.05, $75.99.99.Good enough. We'll create a function to find the sum of these prices and print a total. Let's say double total equals, then I'll invoke a get total function, which we still need to declare and define. So let's do that now. We'll return a double, double get total. Let's list the parameters. We need to accept an array of doubles, double prices then add a set of square brackets for the parameter. Now, when we pass an array to a function, you only need to pass the array name. You don't need a set of square brackets. Then we'll need a function declaration. Let's do that before the main function. Then at the end of my program, I will display the total. Standard output, pick a currency. Uh, let's pick a dollar sign. Then I will display the total. Within the getTotal function, I'm going to declare a separate local instance of a total variable. Remember that variables can have the same name as long as they're within a different function. So we have double total. I'm going to iterate over my array using a for loop. Normally what we would do is say int i equals zero. I would continue this as long as i is less than. Then at this point, we would calculate the size of the array. But technically, this isn't going to work, and I'll demonstrate why. We have the size of our array, prices, divided by the size of either the data type or one of the elements. Typically, I like to use one of the elements. Prices at index 0. Then I will increment our counter by 1 during each iteration. Within our for loop, let's assign total equal to total plus prices at index of i. Or we could shorten this to total plus equals prices at index of i. At the end of our program, we will return whatever the total is. Now, this isn't going to work the way it's written now. Here's why. When we pass an array to a function, it decays into what's known as a pointer, which we haven't discussed yet, but we will in future topics. Within this function, we're not working with an array anymore. We're working with a pointer that points to the address of where the array begins. This function has no idea how big this array is anymore. We can't calculate how many elements are within this array. What we could do is that when we invoke this function, we can pass in the array as well as the size of the array. Since this function no longer knows how big the array is, we can explicitly let the function know what the size is. So let's calculate what the size is. Int size equals, we can just copy all of this code, paste it. Now, when we invoke this function, I'm going to pass the size as a second argument. Then we'll need a matching set of parameters. Int size. Be sure to add that with your function declaration too if you have one. I would like to continue this for loop as long as i is less than size. Now this should work. Let's verify that. Yep, and our total is $150.03. In conclusion, when you pass an array to a function, you only have to pass the array name. You don't need a set of square brackets when you do so. However, when a function receives an array, it decays into a pointer, and the function no longer knows what the size of the array is. So we could pass that as an additional argument to let the function know what the size is, which we could then use to, you know, iterate over the array. So that's how to pass an array to a function. Your assignment is to post a function that accepts an array as an argument in the comments section down below. And well, yeah, that's how to pass an array to a function in C++.